Hi, and welcome to World History 2. My name is Ahmed Abu Rashid, and I will be your world history teacher for the upcoming academic year. I come from an interdisciplinary background in business and humanities, and I look forward to seeing and working with you all. In this video, we will discuss what you can expect out of the course throughout the year, what topics we'll be covering, and how your work will be assessed. So let's begin with taking a look at the course overview. So this course is split into two parts. World History 1, which you've taken in grade 10, covered the years before the 15th century, before the Age of Exploration, and World History 2, which picks up in Unit 11, picks up from the Age of Discovery or Exploration and moves on forward to the enlightenment and to our modern day so we will be looking to uh, uh, analyzing to learn how to analyze historical sources and learn to make connections and craft his historical arguments as we explore concepts such as um, humans in the environment cultural systems governance economic systems as well as societal norms and technology and innovation so let's begin by digging a little deeper into our, our uh, material. So topic 11, new global connections. As the world expanded, global connections became more intricate. Remember here we're talking about beginning in the 1400s, the early 1400s. Explorers like the ones you might have heard of, Columbus and Vasco da Gama, they opened up new trade routes, leading to cultural exchange and something known as the Colombian Exchange. Now, this brought goods and ideas between the old and new worlds. These connections, nonetheless, also led to conflicts and the spread of disease. So we will be looking at how the how globalization really started to gain momentum through figures like Columbus, Vasco da Gama, will explore their motivations and the events that took place. So topic 12, absolutism and revolution. So absolutism is a system where rulers held all power. Uh, it, it was eventually challenged by movements um, for individual rights and liberties. The Enlightenment brought new ideas about democracy and human rights. Revolutions like the American Revolution and the French Revolution aim to overthrow oppressive systems and establish more just societies. So we will be looking at the rulers of France, how the French Revolution came about, what were its key events and its outcome. We will do the same briefly about the American Revolution and learn more about the Enlightenment and how the human being was being re-identified, rethought, so to speak. Topic 13, Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was trans uh, transformed economies and societies through mechanization and urbanization. Factories and machine reshaped produ production and people's lives, such as the steam engine, say. This era also witnessed the rise of the working class and calls for, for labor rights and improved conditions. So one of the bad aspects at the time of industrialization was the creation of monopolies, the oppressiveness of um, the owners towards uh, the labor that they hired by giving them low pay, uh, working in poor conditions and not making them part of the process. Topic 14, nationalism and the spread of democracy. Nationalism, the idea of a shared identity among a group, led to the unification of Germany and Italy. Democracy also began to spread as people demanded more say in their governments. Movements like the suffrage movement advocated for women's right to vote, marking steps towards equality. The, uh, the age of imperialism during this era Powerful nations sought to expand their influence by colonizing other lands. The scramble for Africa and the colonization of Asia marked this period. Imperialism had significant cultural, economic, and political impacts on both the colonizers and the colonized. 
Topic 16, World War One and the Russian Revolution. So, World War One brought unprecedented destruction and upheaval. The war's aftermath led to the Russian Revolution, where the Bolsheviks overthrew the monarchy, resulting in the creation of the Soviet Union. These events reshaped political landscapes and led to the emergence of new ideologies that we will explore. Now, World War II, a global conflict, emerged from the unresolved tensions of World War I. The war saw devastating destruction and the use of atomic bombs. It also marked the rise of the United States and the Soviet Union as superpowers. The post-war period witnessed the Cold War, which is an ideological struggle between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. This era also brought decolonization movements leading to the independence of many nations. The civil rights movement in the U.S. challenged racial segregation and fought for equal rights. Advancements in technology such as Internet have connected the world in in unprecedented ways. However, changes like climate change, global conflicts, and economic inequality persist. Today, nation, nations grapple with finding ways to collaborate and address these pressing issues. So, we've explored, and I hope it wasn't too long, a series of critical moments in history that have shaped the world we live in. We spoke it in an accessible language, in a general language, and we will, of course, get into the details during the year. So, from revolutions and global connections to conflicts and progress, These events have contributed to the complex tapestry of our modern society, and that is why it is important to study history. A word or two about assessment. So, as you know, we have two terms throughout the year, and each term is split into two assessments. Now, we have assessment one, which makes up 35% of your grade. It is a test-focused assessment. Meanwhile, assessment two, which makes an equal contribution of 35%, leading to a total of 70%, is a project-based assessment. So one exam-based assessment and one project-based assessment concluded by an end of semester, a midterm or final uh, exam, that consists of 30% of your final grade. Now, in terms of in-class policies and procedures, of course, uh, you're supposed to adhere to respect, to collaboration, and to honesty. So things such as plagiarism are prohibited and not allowed. Things such as disrespecting uh, your class, your school, your, your peers, your teachers, all of those things are our violations of the contract, so to speak, as we have working and living together at school. So I hope this wasn't too long. I would like to thank you and say that I look forward to working with you all. And I think it will be a nice, fruitful and productive year. Thank you.